Well, because of the situation with Israel and the Palestinians, we haven't talked much about Ukraine lately. So this is going to be an update on the Ukraine situation, which is, of course, dire for Ukraine. Russia has won this conflict, and we are in the last chapter. This is the chapter that will probably lead to Zelensky either being removed via a military coup by his own people or otherwise forced to step down very, very soon. And here's what's happening. On the battlefield, uh, the Western press, which has constantly lied about this entire conflict, they're claiming that there's a stalemate, that neither side can gain ground. And they've even claimed that Ukraine has taken back 50% of the territory that Russia once occupied. I mean, that's that is a very dishonest description of what's happened. The entire counteroffensive that has been now months in the making has gone virtually nowhere. No gains by Ukraine, except I don't know, a few, maybe a few square kilometers total. I mean, it's, it's nothing. Uh, the line basically hasn't moved for many months, and Russia is waiting this out, actually, which I'll get to in a second. But on the battlefield, Ukraine has run out of soldiers, and it pains me to know how many young men, how many lives were lost in this conflict. Hundreds of thousands of young Ukrainian men have been killed in this conflict. And it was needless, and it was all done by, well, the United States and Zelensky, who was a, a, a controlled puppet. This was all done to try to weaken Russia, and it failed, and those lives did not need to be lost. Understand that you've been lied to this entire time by the Western media, which of course is no surprise, lied to about everything involving Ukraine and Russia, and now also the Middle East, that's uh, no surprise. But we were always told that there would be some new super weapon. Oh, you know, Ukraine's gonna get Panzer, or not, not Panzer, um, Leopard 2 tanks, right? And oh, Ukraine's gonna get uh, Abrams tanks. Oh, Ukraine's gonna get F-16s. And oh, Ukraine's gonna get high Mars missile systems and so on. Every few months, you heard another pronouncement, like this is gonna change the war. It was all a lie. None of it changed the war. And a lot of that equipment has already been destroyed by Russia using you know, very advanced anti-air defense systems and Landsat drones and so on. So nothing from the West worked. In fact, the West showed itself to be really incompetent. And Zelensky is now painted as delusional by the corporate media, Newsweek in particular. And there have been interviews and articles in The Economist and other mainstream, even globalist you know, publications. The, the Economist is a globalist rag, you could say. Well, uh, maybe rag isn't the right term for it. It's a, you know, it's a pretty big deal publication, but it, is, it definitely answers to the globalists. And what has come out recently is that they're painting Zelensky as delusional. And this is clearly an effort to prepare to see Zelensky removed from power Again, either through a coup, maybe an assassination, or maybe he's forced to resign. But one way or another, Zelensky is going to be removed, and then he's going to be blamed for the horrific mistakes, the losses, the miscalculations, all of that. A new regime will come into power in Ukraine, one that will be willing to negotiate with Russia for an end to this conflict. So that's where this is going. Make no mistake. Okay? So... Just to summarize, Ukraine has lost this war. Russia is really just waiting on purpose. They're waiting for the, the West to run out of money. They're waiting for Zelensky to be removed from power. They're waiting for Ukraine to come to the negotiation table. Now, here's where it's going to get very interesting and also very difficult for the West. Russia will hold all the cards in negotiating the final peace arrangement. Russia holds all the cards. Russia does not need to negotiate. They could continue to push westward if they wanted to, and they could take a lot more territory, including Odessa, which, by the way, Odessa will end up in Russian hands by the time this is all said and done. So Ukraine is going to lose its southern coastline. Trust me, that's exactly what's going to happen. So Russia is going to set the terms on the negotiation for peace. Those terms will include not only Odessa, like I mentioned, 
but also, by the way, quite a bit of Ukrainian territory, probably more territory than what Russia currently controls, but not all of Ukraine. Russia does not want to control Western Ukraine because Western Ukraine, well, they hate Russia. I mean, they're not Russians. You know, Ukraine has always been split east and west, where the east has always been Russian ethnic people. And most of those people have considered themselves to be Russian, whereas Western Ukraine, they've considered themselves to be Western Europeans, essentially. And they, they despise Russia. So Russia doesn't want to occupy Western Ukraine and try to force those people to love Mother Russia. That's never going to fly. So that's not going to be part of it. But what will be part of it is a constitutional amendment to Ukraine's constitution that makes sure that Ukraine never joins NATO and makes sure that Ukraine never hosts bioweapons facilities for Western countries and also makes sure that Ukraine never hosts missiles, you know, missile launch sites for Western countries. So Ukraine is going to be substantially reduced in size, reduced in uh, economic output. It's going to lose its ports, like I said, and it's going to lose its standing with NATO because, you know, the, the push to, to make Ukraine part of NATO won't fly any longer when this peace accord is finally signed. And this probably won't happen this calendar year. That's too soon. It, it is likely to happen sometime in 2024. And there may be additional efforts on the part of the West to try to provoke Russia into more military attacks or even to try to escalate this to a nuclear war. But so far, Putin has resisted those efforts and the West is now uh, very much occupied with Israel. Even the Western media is occupied with Israel. And funding for Ukraine is on its last legs. If there's any more money that's going to be sent to Ukraine, it's probably the last chapter of that. There won't be billions more. Now, granted, the corrupt Ukrainian officials, they milked this pretty darn good. And so did the corrupt United States officials and the corrupt, you know, weapons industry people and, you know, State Department people. Everybody got paid. I mean, if you think $110 billion actually went to the front lines of Ukraine, you know, you're kidding yourself, right? The soldiers didn't get that in terms of food, ammunition, clothing, first aid, you know, they didn't get that in terms of ammo. Almost none of that went to the soldiers. It went to the pockets of corrupt officials in Ukraine and the United States. It was a giant money laundering racket. That's what every war is, it turns out, a giant money laundering racket. And this was no different. But that racket, its time is up. And Ukraine will not survive this intact as it currently stands. Mark my words. Russia will force Ukraine to sign essentially a surrender, but it may not be called that in the media. It will probably be painted as some kind of, you know, victory by Ukraine. <laughs> some like we we got Russia to stop. Yeah, but Russia forced you into the terms that Russia wanted. So now, uh, Ukraine isn't of course the only nation impacted by this defeat. The United States will be impacted. So for the last section here in this podcast, I want to cover that. What are the ramifications for the West? Of course, Western Europe, it has been, you know, its economy has been imploded or partially destroyed by this due to the lack of energy supplies from Russia, which all stems from the economic sanctions that have been inflicted on Russia by the United States and also, you know, cut off from the SWIFT system, but also the bombing of the Nord Stream pipeline. So this is why Germany's economy is imploding and France's and the UK to some extent as well. That's all going to continue. So it's just like the US to wade into a conflict, like throw a bunch of bombs everywhere, destroy a bunch of infrastructure, and then just leave hell on earth for all those countries that are affected. Like, oh, uh, you know, see you later uh, after, after bombing everything and destroying everything. Yeah, see you, hope, hope life is good for you, you know goodbye, we're, we're going back home to the U.S. It's just like the U.S. to do that. But the U.S. is also going to suffer horribly from this as well. And here's why. The military defeat of Ukraine will be seen globally by other world leaders as a military defeat of the United States and of NATO. Now, 
this will factor in very strongly in the Middle East. This will, in effect, embolden nations like Turkey and Iran and others, perhaps Syria at some point, and Lebanon, or at least Hezbollah. This will embolden those groups to be more aggressive in their stance against Israel. Knowing that the United States has failed to defend Ukraine, and therefore the thinking goes, how can the United States really defend Israel? Now, granted, the United States has a very powerful Navy with two aircraft carrier uh, strike force groups uh, near Israel right now, which means the U.S. can deploy lots of bombs, you know, from uh, fighter jets that can drop ordnance. They can also launch hundreds of cruise missiles from all of the, the other ships that are part of the strike force carrier group. Uh, the U.S. can inflict a tremendous amount of damage, no question about it, but they can't really put boots on the ground in any kind of numbers that would make a difference. Sure, they can deploy, you know, a couple thousand U.S. Marines or Navy SEALs or Special Forces, or and, and the word is some of that's already happening, that there are, in fact, U.S. Special Forces uh, troops fighting in Gaza right now. That's what I've been told from now two different sources. I can't confirm it but I'll pass that along uh, in case you see that confirmed somewhere else. But the U.S. can't deploy a wave of ground forces to fight, let's say, the Turkish army. I mean, <laughs> give me a break. And if the U.S. did, the U.S. would fail because the U.S. can't even beat Russia via Ukraine, not with all the tanks and bombers and, and artillery and everything in the world. The U.S. just doesn't have an effective fighting force any longer because the Pentagon's all gone woke and the culture of the American people is a culture of, you know, snowflakeianism and wokeism and, and apathy and laziness uh, among the younger generations in particular. Uh, there are exceptions to that, you know, homeschooled kids that grew up on ranches and so on. They're very, very capable. But by and large, the, the culture of America's youth has collapsed into, you know, a pathetic state that really can't can't provide the military uh, soldiers, you know, fighting soldiers. And fighting soldiers can't be snowflakes, not if they're going to be effective. So all of these countries in the Middle East that are watching this are going to be looking at what happens with Ukraine, and they're going to say, wow, the U.S. is weaker than we thought. And again, that's going to embolden those countries in the, in the Middle East. Now, another factor that's very important is global de-dollarization. So Nations of the world are very much aware that the dollar is collapsing because of the mad, mad money printing by the U.S. Federal Reserve and the Treasury. $33 trillion in debt right now, and the U.S. is paying a trillion dollars a year in interest on the debt. And already, internationally, the number of people or, let's say, nations and institutions willing to purchase U.S. Treasuries, i.e. U.S. Treasury debt, that number is dwindling rapidly. In fact, just this last week, there was a catastrophic failure to sell U.S. treasuries. And the net result is that, of course, higher interest rates are going to have to be offered, or yields, as they're called, in order to entice foreign buyers to buy more U.S. treasury debt. Well, uh, this is only going to raise the cost of paying interest on the debt for the United States government, and it's only going to accelerate the total financial collapse of the U.S. empire, which Russia sees coming, China sees that coming, and of course, Iran and all the other nations see it coming as well, including Saudi Arabia, by the way. So if the U.S. fails in Ukraine and Zelensky is removed and, you know, Russia is victorious, this is going to accelerate the global move away from the dollar. And that will have catastrophic consequences on the ability of the United States to sell off treasury debt. And more nations will join the BRICS nations. And the whole BRICS system, I have since learned, is about to be rolled out uh, next summer, the summer of 2024. So with nations moving away from the dollar, you're going to see them selling off dollar holdings and selling off treasuries, which will make it even more expensive for the U.S., to, to sell off treasuries and have to offer even higher yields. And then the end result of that is that 
the Federal Reserve is going to have to print the money to buy Treasury debt. And this begins, and by the way, that has already begun, but this puts you in a place where you have a doom cycle of hyperinflation, where you're printing your own currency to pay the interest on your debt because there are no more international buyers of your debt, or, or very few, relatively speaking. And thus, you just have to keep printing and printing and printing. And that ends in you know, a hyperinflationary blowout. That ends in something resembling Weimar Germany, although perhaps not, not as exacerbated as that historical situation. But it ends very quickly. And I've heard arguments over the years. People say, oh, that can't happen because there's so many countries using the dollar. It's the, it's the world reserve currency. You know, Yeah, it was. But this is my point. That's changing. I mean, even since the U.S. military pulled out of Kabul and you know failed in Afghanistan, I mean, look at that failure. The world saw that and said, my goodness, the U.S. military really cannot project much power. And so that's like strike one. And if the U.S. fails in Ukraine, that's strike two. You know, the world is looking at that and saying, my God, they can't even, they can't even defend Ukraine against Russia, a country that the West said was nothing but an elaborate gas station. Well, this gas station country just beat all of NATO, by the way. <laughs> so that's strike two. What do you think strike three is going to be? Yeah, failure in the Middle East, right? Failure in the Middle East. The U.S. is, of course, providing weapons and money and soldiers and expertise to Israel. And while I have no doubt that Israel will end up destroying whatever it wants in Gaza, because, you know, it's all surrounded and the Gazans don't have an air force or anything like that. I mean, they're, they're surrounded and trapped at this point. But Israel will likely fail to defend itself against other countries if this war escalates, which means that the United States will also be seen as failing to defend its allies. And that will be strike three. And it's like three strikes, you're out. Three strikes and we dump the dollar. And nations like Saudi Arabia or the UAE or, or even you know Venezuela or, or whatever, I mean, we're talking about nations in Southeast Asia, uh, South America, uh, African nations especially, and nations across the Middle East, they will choose to dump the dollar because it's losing value every day, and they will embrace something like the BRICS currency system. So understand that the defeat of Ukraine by Russia is setting all of this into motion. And the upshot is we're talking about the collapse of Western Europe in terms of its economy. So Western Europe is done. Western Europe will not survive much longer. Uh, it's also being completely overrun with migrants, by the way, and that's, that was always part of the plan. You know, Western Europe will cease to exist as anything resembling what it once was. But the United States of America, the U.S. empire, is also at risk of a total financial collapse, which would cause a breaking up of the United States of America. And given that this country is so bifurcated anyway, you know, so polarized, it's hard to see what kind of force could bring the union back together when there are states like Texas, where I am, that just can't wait to declare their independence, by the way, and become the Republic of Texas once again. You know, Texas used to be its own nation. And it can certainly go back to that, and it can have its own currency. And the Texas economy would absolutely boom. I mean, it would be a golden age to live in Texas when it has an honest currency and, and you don't have to send half your money to Washington, D.C. to be spent on you know bombs for Israel or whatever. Now, Texas would just boom, and so would Florida, and so would most of the, the Midwest and the flyover states and so on. The states that would collapse would be California and Illinois because of all the Democrats in Chicago and probably uh, you know, New York because of all the Democrats in New York City and, and New Jersey and so on. Uh, of course, Massachusetts and Connecticut would be goners because nobody in charge there understands anything about economics, for starters. Uh, nor freedom, by the way, which is... Uh, 
uh, kind of a shame. Uh, Oregon and Washington would probably experience internal you know, civil wars because you'd have uh, the vast majority of Oregonians and Washingtonians, I think is the right word. Uh, they are rural people uh, versus the uh, insane, you know, left-wing libtard city people. And uh, you'd probably see a lot of fighting in those states. Anyway, we're talking about not just a civil war. We're talking about secession, the balkanization of the United States, and multiple civil wars inside various states. And that would make the United States of America history, and it would obviously, you know, weaken the entire uh, continent of North America. You know, Canada would suffer as well, and that would put China and Russia in the driver's seat on the world stage, but especially China. And if the United States of America collapses, then everybody's going to use bricks. And then China becomes the dominant industrial nation on the planet. And China and Russia and Brazil and other nations together become the dominant new world reserve currency. And then the U.S. actually collapses into destitution, famine, internal strife, chaos, violence, you know, all those things. It might get so bad that, uh, you know, the Mexicans would flee back south across the border. It's like, we got to get out of the United States. <laughs> it's collapsing. It's worse than Mexico. <laughs> I mean, who knows? And then you'd have the Mexican government putting up a wall <laughs> to stop people from coming across to the south, you know? Wouldn't that be funny? So Mexico can build a wall, but the United States can't. Anyway, uh, that's the analysis of where all this is going. The bottom line is Ukraine has lost. It's, it's done. Okay, it's over. Ukraine cannot win this war. Russia will not be defeated. Russia will dictate the terms of surrender, or however you want to call it, the terms of peace. But it will essentially be a surrender. And then there will be implications spanning the globe for many, many years to come. And the United States will end up with a lot less power, less influence, and probably a financial collapse to boot. Although it will take time. It won't be right away. It'll take time for all this to ripple through the system. But that's what's coming. So if you want to get prepared, uh, let me give a couple of sponsor plugs here. Of course, uh, BeReady123.com. They offer the uh, solar panels and the solar generators that will work when the power grid goes down. So that's something important to check out. Be ready, 123.com. And then for gold and silver, physical stuff in your hands, it's the Treasure Island Coins and Precious Metals Company. And you can find them at metalswithmike.com. And it's a fantastic time to preserve your assets in gold and silver. And I'm not talking about speculation, just preservation. But check out metalswithmike.com. You can see their prices in real time, very competitive, and they have insured discrete delivery. So thank you for listening today. Mike Adams here, the health ranger for naturalnews.com and also, of course, brighteon.com. Take care. Thank you for supporting us here at brighteon.com. And one way you can also help support us is by shopping at healthrangerstore.com. And we've got some really exciting new products to share with you here today. Uh, I've got samples on my desk. And there's three things to mention here. The one on the left, it's called Hydrate Elementals. It's a combination of coconut water powder, certified organic, and Aquaman, which is a mineral supplement that has some very special, unique properties. Uh, this is about mineral replenishment and hydration. You can learn more about it at our website, healthrangerstore.com. It's very popular, especially with people who do any kind of fitness or workouts. We've also got here on the right side, a new trail mix product. This has coconut chips and nuts and uh, you know almonds and walnuts plus raisins. It's a very delicious trail mix and it's not just a bunch of junk and a bunch of crumbs and byproducts of nut processing. I mean, these, this is a high-end trail mix, all certified organic, all lab tested, including for glyphosate and heavy metals and more. Uh, check it out at healthrangerstore.com. You're really going to enjoy this. And then finally, in the middle there, we have something brand new that I'm super excited about. It's a pine needle nasal spray. And that's in the green little small vials there with the, uh, the nasal spray aerosolized tip on the top. I personally harvested the pine needles for this in Texas. They're loblolly pine trees. 
because the pine needles are extremely high in shikimic acid. And then I oversaw the extraction of the shikimic acid and then the mixing of that into this formula. You can read the ingredients on our website. But this product is not being sold. It's only available for free as a bonus giveaway during our Black Friday sale event that's coming up. And watch for that. Join our email list. You'll get the announcements. You, you get you know, all the links to participate in that. The only way that you can get that nasal spray with the shikimic acid using pine needles that I personally harvested in Texas is through the Black Friday event at healthrangerstore.com. And during that event, by the way, it's our biggest sale of the year. We're going to have the most products on discount, all kinds of amazing discounts, including on third-party products that are drop shipped and so on. It's wait till you see the catalog and the landing page for that. It's going to be quite impressive, but you definitely want to take advantage of that and get some of this pine needle nasal spray and look up shikimic acid too, because that's the molecule that is used to make uh, Tamiflu, by the way. Very interesting fact. Uh, also, one more thing on our website, healthrangerstore.com, we now have available certified organic heavy cream powder. We've got it in pouches and number 10 cans. And this heavy cream powder is, of course, you know, laboratory verified. It's tested for you know, heavy metals and glyphosate and, and microbiology as well. And there's no junk in here. It's literally powdered heavy cream. It's not just maltodextrin and, and you know, a bunch of garbage with cream flavor. None, none of that stuff. This is the real deal. That's why it's not cheap, by the way. But if you want to add to your food storage pantry, heavy cream, this goes a long way. And we also have, by the way, we have now organic white cheddar cheese powder, also in number 10 cans and pouches as well. So you can make your own macaroni and cheese pretty easily by combining this cheese powder with the organic cream powder and some salt and pepper and some onion powder and get yourself some, you know, organic macaroni. And it's all done. You have a really nice meal. So take advantage of this at healthrangerstore.com and that will also help support this platform. We thank you for your support and I'm committed to bringing you more interviews, more content, more analysis each and every day that helps you understand what's happening in our world, helps you navigate it, and also importantly, helps you survive it. Thank you for supporting us here at Brighteon.com and healthrangerstore.com. Take care. A global reset is coming, and that's why I've recorded a new nine-hour audiobook. It's called The Global Reset Survival Guide. You can download it for free by subscribing to the naturalnews.com email newsletter, which is also free. I'll describe how the monetary system fails. I also cover emergency medicine and first aid and what to buy to help you avoid infections. So download this guide, it's free, it's my gift to you simply because I want like-minded people to survive.